Last year marked my 10th year in this organization and my growth within this organization and within the capital market and indeed the growth of women within this organization and within the capital market, some of whom are on this podium with me, is a testament to the fact that this organization and the Nigerian capital market, we live what we preach. Gender equality for us is not just a buzzword. It's not just the flavor of the season, or it's not just about being politically correct. Well, it is an ethos we live by to ensure exponential growth within this market, within our institutions, and within the economy of Nigeria. Over the past three years, NGX has forged a very strong partnership with the International Finance Corporation through the Nigeria to Equal program. Through this collaboration, we have been able to open more opportunities for women in leadership, employment, and entrepreneurship across various sectors of the Nigerian private sector. I'm also pleased to announce that NGX is currently working with United Nations Women to issue a gender bond in Nigeria. And this initiative, thank you very much. Through this initiative, we hope to be able to mobilize capital towards projects that benefit women and advance gender equality across various sectors of our economy. I recall I spoke at um, International Women's Day event here, I think it was in 2015. I was a member of council at the time, and the topic then was building a successful career as a woman. I think it's great to see that since then, the discourse has progressed from focusing solely on what women need to do to succeed. Now we're talking about what companies need to do in order to inspire inclusion and to provide better support for women at work. Because the truth is, for any organization to succeed in creating a genuinely equitable workplace for all, we need to consider both angles. What do women need to do, but also what do companies need to do to better support women? And I'll briefly state that when I say what companies need to do to better support women, I'm not asking for a free pass for women, because we don't need it. What I'm talking about is recognizing that there are certain inherent factors that could adversely impact the careers of female staff if not dealt with. Now, once companies recognize those factors, they need to be deliberate about addressing them in a way that levels the playing field. And that's really all we need, a level playing field. As of today, we only have 15% of stockbrokers as women out of the whole numbers that we have here. How do we increase that number? Okay, and even the uh, certification that was just done, only 4% passed the examination. That is a cause for concern. Maybe for some sectors, they're doing well. But for our capital market, we really need to do something about it. And how do we do it? It's gonna take everybody involved as a stakeholder to make sure that this happens. Um, we're going to be looking at it from different as aspects. What do we expect government to do and regulators to help to get women uh, participating fully in this market? We're looking at them. We're hoping that uh, they would provide, promote, they will give policies and regulations that will increase women's particip participation in this capital market. Setting targets for female representation in stockbroking firms in providing incentives for companies to hire and retain female brokers. What we do in empowering women is that we use the arts to change the narrative about us. Um, you typically know who you are through your stories. Our storytelling for a long time has been done by foreigners for us, thereby skewing the image of Nigerians, Nigerian women, and African women. For a long time, we all believed that we don't have heroes, but the reality is that we have many heroines that have gone ahead of us. From the great Fumilaya Ransom Kuti that we just shot, women who have blazed the trail, gone ahead of us to demand change where people thought it was impossible. People who looked at colonial government and traditional government and told them, you will not continue to use the sweat of these women as cheap labor, taxing them unnecessarily, and fought them to a standstill until it was changed. Those are the kind of women that we celebrate and the narrative that we're putting out for African women. Today I'm reminded of the women um, around me, women who have inspired and have gone ahead to do extraordinary things, building communities, global villages, and doing a lot uh, within their 
space. But we haven't seen enough of that. I think there's, um, it's imperative for us to um, raise our voices and ask for more to be done. We've actually seen a stagnation in terms of investing in women. And I speak from the UN angle where we um, work with a number of member companies that are in the private sector driving sustainability. Um, while, whilst we've seen progress so far, I think there's still much more room um, for us to do more. So we've seen um, you know, incredible things um, coming in the space of board appointments, um, but it's not, it's not enough. We've seen incredible things done in the space of top level executive management, but it's not enough. We have to support more women. We have to invest in them. We have to speak for them. We have to provide a space for them to be able to thrive. We have to accept women as they are. We have a $1.7 trillion gap for financing for women entrepreneurs today. It is clear that it is not a feat that one organization can achieve. We need partnerships. And that is something we emphasize at the Sterling One Foundation. As gender equality is a thematic focus area we mainstream across our, our focus programs, we have also identified the need to bring together stakeholders for them to partner and scale projects and initiatives that are delivering results. <laughs>